Hi everybody. Well, we're off to an adventure this morning, so if you've logged on, welcome. Uh, we're going to start in just a couple minutes. We're just kind of figuring out things right now, never having done this before. So um, get a cup of coffee, get a cup of tea, hot chocolate, whatever your beverage is this morning, and uh, welcome to what will surely be a wonderful morning together, uh, worshiping together as Hope United Church of Christ here in Moline and in all places, wherever y'all are. If you are watching, if you want to sign in and let us know that you're watching, I think there's a place on Facebook where you can mention that you're here. Let us know you're here um, and uh, we'll see how this goes. We'll start in just a minute. All right. How are we doing on time, my amazing crew here? y'all in your pajamas still <laughs> in your Sunday pajamas <laughs> Sunday best pajamas you're up to eight viewers oh eight nine viewers. all right <laughs> ten <laughs> eleven that fun this is really neat I don't... Well, we're going to try and keep time like we would at church on a Sunday. You know how prompt we are and, um, on Sundays at worship at um, Hope UCC because we run a, a tight ship there, don't we? Well, let us come together this morning in this. I will not be singing. So I invite you to sing along at home. One verse of the music. Uh, that we'll be playing. Um, if you are on our mailing list from Hope, you read. this morning. Uh, my musical accompanist this morning is the great Bob Poor. Our readers this morning are none other than Charles Poor and Martin Poor. And then of course I am Santina Poor, the pastor of Hope UCC. And we welcome you to this worship service. So um, again, you received hopefully the order of worship for today follow along at home. We're going to make some changes along the way. We just sort of kind of streamlined things a little bit this morning. And uh, just know that even though we are in a variety of places and spaces worshiping together this morning, we are indeed together. We are one. We know, we know, we know that the church is not confined to one space. It is not confined to a building. We are the church. We are the body of Christ in all places and God is with us in all places. And as we gather together this morning, I invite you now to, if you have one, to light a candle. Center yourselves. Shut out the things around us that are filling our heads right now with stress, with worry. Breathe in and out. Let's do that again.
feel the peace of God, feel the assurance of knowing that no matter where we are, no matter where life has taken us on this journey, no matter if this is our first time worshiping together or countless times we have worshiped together, know here at Hope United Church of Christ, wherever we are gathered, you have a home at Hope UCC. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. continue on our journey through Lent as we step inside the story that's full of difficult moments. We put ourselves in the picture of Holy Week so that we might take a closer look and let the ancient story open us to a deeper love for Jesus. Besides the Last Supper, Holy Week contains another important story that happens at a dinner. Earlier in the week, Jesus and his followers gather for a meal and a woman shows up unexpectedly to anoint Jesus in an extravagant show of devotion. To say she caused quite a stir might be um, quite an understatement. We imagine ourselves in the room with him with this precious oil. Are we ourselves moved by her generosity and her outpouring of emotion, or are we uncomfortable as Jesus refers to his own death? Does our complaining or anger really serve to hide our Please join me as we say our prayer of confession together. Holy God, it is so hard to not be afraid. Sometimes our fear makes us less compassionate and more judgmental. We think we can ward off getting hurt by holding back, unwilling to risk putting ourselves out there for the sake of love. Forgive us, O oh God, 
encourage us to extravagant acts of love, especially when we are frightened. You entered our story through Jesus. Now help us to enter fully into the story of your kingdom. Your kingdom that we experience as a kingdom, a family on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And now please join us in singing one verse, the first verse of Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. confession comes our assurance of forgiveness. So know this, friends. Be assured of this, that there is no limit on love. Love does not run out, and we can start giving more love at any time. Even if we think there is a there is absolutely limitless love and mercy that comes to us from God, that is given to us from God, that is shared with us by our loving, loving creator. You are forgiven, you are freed, you are encouraged and loved by God who wants you to love others and to live fully as you are created to be. Let us enter the passion of Christ as we are assured of the love and forgiveness and grace of God. May the peace of God be with all of you. Whether you are a family of one or a family of many, please share that peace out loud with others whether they can hear you or not type it in on if you're watching Facebook live if you're participating live please pass peace to others and now let us join together in a time of prayer as we enter into prayer together our time of communal prayer pastoral prayer um, I am sorry to announce, I am saddened to announce that Sam Brown has passed. Maybe you have heard this. We tried to make sure the word got out uh, throughout the congregation. We have been praying for Sam for so long. He has been so brave facing many medical challenges and Linda so wonderfully brave right by his side, walking this journey with him, supporting him, holding him, just loving him and loving each other, Sam and Linda. Uh, Sam did pass on Wednesday evening and he was surrounded by Linda and his daughters, family, friends. Beautiful, beautiful time for him and their family together. But sad. And especially in this uncertain time when things are changing regarding funerals and arrangements, they will be having a small private family funeral this Saturday, uh, and then they will celebrate in a large way, as Sam would have them uh, celebrate when uh, this time of quarantine and uh, separation and social distancing is over. So we hold Linda and <clears throat> we hold Linda and uh, Sam's family, we hold uh, Wendy, Cheryl, Kelly, you all are held in prayer today. Let us pray. 
holy and loving God, we are filled with uncertainty that turns to fear so easily. Help us to remember that your hand is upon us through all we do. That your hand calms our fear. Your hand assures us of your presence. Your hand guides us when it feels like we are not sure where to turn or who to listen to. Help us to feel your hand upon us, to recognize your hand and the many ways that you appear in our lives. Together, we remember today the extravagant love that was shown to Jesus and his invitation to remember this woman through our actions of loving others. We know, God, that when we experience the valley of the shadow of death, we are called to be with one another, to be with one another in person and in spirit. You have taught us what community means, what the body of Christ looks like. You have taught us how we are to live. Let us always live into that knowledge and that truth. We remember today those who are caring for the sick, who are caring for those who are afraid, for those who are, in some cases, dying. We remember today the caregivers, the medical professionals, the hospice workers, and all the humanitarians, all the essential personnel who risk leaving home to enter dangerous places to help others. All the custodial crews who are cleaning, all the sanitation workers who keep spaces safe, all the nurses, the doctors, the technicians, the medical personnel, the scientists, the researchers who risk leaving home to care for others. The grocery workers, the cafe workers who are providing food and meals for children, for families, for personnel who are out working, all the essential personnel. Bless them and protect them, Almighty God. We ask your blessings and love to cover all those people in our lives that need advocacy, who need your presence and need our prayers. We ask your abundant love and grace be known to Linda and Kelly and Wendy as they enter this new season in their lives, a season where Sam's physical presence is no longer with them Yet his spirit, his love, his energy, his legacy remains strongly felt. Bring your healing love and peace upon them today and all the days ahead. And bless Sam, God. Hold him. Keep him. Treasure him as we treasure him here in our memories and our hearts. We ask your peace be felt for all those who are quarantined in retirement and assisted living facilities and their loved ones. It is so hard to be separated when our loved ones need us the most. Bless those who are separated and those who love them. Let them feel your love and your blessings. Let them be abundant. And we pray today for Zach and his girlfriend that they may find a way, a solution, and get home. We pray that Angela, Rick, Kelsey, and Kathy can find peace in this critical time. 
we thank you for the strength and the, the bravery and the courage that Zach has, that the, the many gifts Zach possesses to help him navigate this time. And we just pray that a solution is found and they get home safely and quickly, Lord. And now, for those of you worshiping at home, I invite you to lift aloud names or places that you would add for our prayers today. Be assured of God's love and presence in your lives. Know that God is here with us wherever we are and wherever our prayers are lifted. The Holy Spirit empowers us to keep moving forward in faith and in love knowing the power and the presence of our Creator, God. The one who taught us this, Jesus the Christ, gave himself for us to know this, for us to even begin to understand this. Please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. And now we will have a time of scripture read uh, by Martin. The first reading from today is from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The second reading from uh, today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 3 through 9. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar, a very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some who were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment <laughs> wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than three hundred denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. This ends the reading from the Gospels. Thank you, MJ. What would probably be a surprise to nobody watching this is um, MJ and Charlie would rather read off camera. I don't blame them, so thank you. You will hear voices um, throughout the service that are theirs. Please, uh, at home, join in singing the refrain of Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus.
this is an opportunity to enter the story of Jesus' passion in a different way. Our painting today, Mary Anoints Jesus' Feet, was created by an anonymous artist in Germany in the 19th century. None of us around the table liked the way things were going here in Jerusalem. The conversation had turned once again to the dire situation for those who were encountered. Those who were hungry, poor, sick, disturbed. But does the Roman state care about them? No. At least we try. Every penny we can scrape up, we try to pass on to those who need it. I had to wonder, though, whether the talk of asking our patrons for more money right now was really because we are afraid. Before Jesus arrived to dinner that night, some of the disciples had said that with the way things are going, perhaps we should be saving money in case we needed to hide out in the not too distant future. And then she walked in. I saw the jar she carried, beautiful, alabaster. And as soon as I smelled the oil as she began to anoint Jesus, I knew it was nard and it had been expensive. And there was a lot of it. Across the table, the others were beginning to stop their conversations and looks of contempt began to cross their f That kind of money could go a long way. I looked down at her. I was close and although she had not said a word, I could sense her intensity and devotion. This love lavished on him. Yet, it was what I really wanted to do. Tell him how he had changed my life and how finally I felt I had purpose in my life. I felt loved and it was such a gift. But how can you offer any gift to this beloved one? He is the anointed one, anointed by God. But here she is anointing him. I realized that what I felt was jealousy mixed with a deep fear that we were losing him. I think we are all afraid of losing him. He tells us to stop judging her. She is preparing me for burial. No, I thought, don't say that. It can't happen. Later, I will remember her just as he asked me to do. And I will remember that he asked us to care for all people the way that she cared for him that night. Thank you, Charlie. You know, it's funny that I planned this text before any of this ever happened. Um, all this coronavirus, COVID-19, and quarantine, before they were the words of the day, I had planned this text for this day. And as things began to change, I thought for a little bit about switching the text. I thought, you know, I'll find one of the texts where we're, we're told to fear not, or you know something like that but as I read this text more closely I found that it really is the perfect message for us today as we are together in separate places wondering how do we care for each other in this time of social distancing how will we experience the love of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit during this anxious time this story in Mark's gospel of the extravagant love and the generous hospitality of this woman has so much to say to us right now because it teaches us that our faith is not simply a matter of God pouring God's love into us. This woman who cares so deeply for Jesus by anointing him with this precious oil this is a story of God receiving that love from us. God continues to call us to love God by loving others with abundantly generous hearts. Now, we don't know who this woman is in this story. Mark's gospel does not give her a name. But her act is so profound that it is memorialized in all of the Gospels in some way. It's an extravagant act she performs using this precious oil 
nard in a way uh, it is not intended to be used. In fact, she's scolded in this story for being so wasteful. The nard that she uses is a perfume that is used for burial and it has a very strong scent because its purpose is to mask the smell of death. More, uh, more than her misuse of its intended purpose, what really upsets the crowd that is gathered at this dinner is that it is such a costly oil that is being used or in their opinion wasted in this way. They talk about its price tag, 300 denarii, they say. So by some estimates in today's value that 300 denarii is equivalent to about $20,000. That's a steep, steep price. And of course, in the midst of the criticisms, Jesus defends this woman and the act she has offered, the gift she has offered. Now remember where this story is placed in Mark's gospel. It's right before Jesus is betrayed and arrested and led to his death, his execution on the cross. This woman is foreshadowing what Jesus needs as he moves toward the cross. Her anointing of Jesus at this time, in this moment in his ministry, it is the blessing he needs as he faces all that awaits him. The loving kindness and selfless care she offers Jesus, this reflects the love and kindness that Jesus himself has given, has shared throughout his ministry, in his preaching, in his teaching and his healing. What this woman has given Jesus, this is how we are to respond to Jesus' love, by offering it back to him, by embodying that love and sharing it as followers of Christ. That brings us to this moment right now in our lives, right now. This historic moment where we are gathered together as God's people. We are gathered, yet we are dispersed. Has it been a little challenging for you to focus lately? It sure has been hard for me, harder than usual anyway. I am so easily distracted by the news flashes that come up on my phone. I have the news on all the time, all the updates. I'm constantly looking up new information about symptoms and diagnoses. I'm continually listening to the sound of my own cough or the coughs or sneezes of Bob and the boys here in the house. Poor Sonny and Kiki, our cat and our dog, I'm even kind of looking at them a little differently now when they, you know, do whatever dogs and cats do. But, you know, I, I hear a cough and I wonder now, was that a dry cough? Was that a sneeze? Are sneezes part of the symptoms? Should I check someone's temperature? I mean, it really is exhausting, isn't it? But in the midst of all the bombardment of information, of the warnings, of our hand washings, of our disinfecting, of our temperature taking. In the midst of all that, what I keep coming back to, what kind of gets me centered, what brings me some peace, some quiet, what I share with you now to hope to bring you some of that centeredness, some of that quiet, is the verse from John, John, from John's gospel, when Jesus, right before he is arrested at that last supper he has with his friends who are gathered there, he turns and he tells them, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just, just as I have loved you. 
new commandment. As I have loved you, you should also love one another. When I repeat that verse, I begin to find my focus. Things get a little clearer. I find myself getting a little calmer. Because isn't this what we're doing right now in this time of curve flattening, of social distancing, stay at home sheltering? Isn't this what we're doing by keeping each other safe? We are loving each other as Jesus has loved us. The way each of us is letting go of something we never thought it was going to be possible to let go of. Giving up a daily workout at the gym. I, I don't know why I said that. That has been the easiest thing in the world for me to let go of. Not eating at a favorite restaurant. Canceling vacation plans. Delaying or changing weddings or even funeral plans and arrangements. What about losing employment? income, making painful decisions, or having them made for us in order to keep others safe, while hearing voices saying that oh, this is all a waste of resources, a waste of time, this is false, no, it's unnecessary. Have you heard those voices saying that? Maybe even voices criticizing folks for making these sacrifices. It all sounds a lot like our, gospels to, our gospel lesson today. Why waste that precious oil at this time? Why? Don't, don't waste that oil. Why? I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You should also love one another. Because this is how we care for God's creation. Because this is the love that is given to us, and it is the love that we share with others. I love the message translation of Mark's text. In it, uh, Jesus responds to the critics of the woman and her act of anointing Jesus by saying, let her alone. Why are you giving her a hard time? She has just done something wonderfully significant for me. This woman has demonstrated a selfless love for Jesus and this story invites us to do the same. This is a challenge today, but living into this and loving others this way gives us the opportunity to love extravagantly every day. As followers of Christ, as Christians, we are all invited on the journey with Jesus. And it is a journey that leads us to the cross and all the hope, all the glory, and all the renewal and life that it brings. On this journey, we have the blessing and the privilege to love and serve others, to sacrifice in some ways so that others may stay healthy and in doing so to love one another as Jesus has loved us. Accept this invitation and discover how transformative it is to receive and offer the extravagant love of God. And be assured, even as we are apart, we are never separated. We are one body with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen.
as we lead into our time of offertory, what would usually be our offertory in our worship service at Hope UCC, I would invite you to consider ways we can offer gifts of ourselves to others during this time. Maybe it's a note in the mail to somebody, a card, letting them know you're thinking of them. Maybe it's, as I saw our neighbors doing out on their sidewalk yesterday with their kids with chalk, drawing messages of love 